We continue to preview the 2022 college football season. Our stop today is Durant, Oklahoma, as we visit with the head football coach of the Southeastern Savage Storm, Coach Tyler Fenwick, in his third season at the helm. Coach, last year, a fantastic year. I don't, I don't think there's any way you can look at it, and maybe you can because I know you nitpick things and, and have a way to look at it. I don't know how you can not look at it as a fantastic year. Nine and three overall, biggest turnaround in Division II last year with eight wins over the year prior, a 1-10 record in 2019. We're not counting the 2020 season. COVID just pretty much wiped everything out there. So what a fantastic turnaround. The season culminated with a victory in a bowl game, a victory over Emporia State in the Live United Bowl. Coach, tell us just a little bit about last season. Bring us up to where we are now. Yeah, I think, you know, last year, uh, yeah, great year. Um, You know, and it was – uh, you know, week to week, you're sitting there going, okay, we want another one. You know, we want another one. That's great. And and really, when you look back and, and you know, it's a testament to our players. Um, it's a testament to all those guys that um, went through the 2019 season when we were one and 10, um, you know, where they could have taken their ball and go, gone home and go, gone somewhere else. And, and, you know, you got a new staff. I mean, we had, there's just so many things that were against us. Um, you know, new coaching staff, new schemes, um, and we're sitting there one and ten at the end of the season, and he's just sitting there waiting for a mass exodus of guys leaving. And um, for whatever reason, um, um, you know, we 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 built uh, you know relationships with these kids, and and for somehow or some form or fashion, they believed in in that we were going to get better. Um, and um, and so uh, you know, I've my exit meetings in, in some of my exit meetings with some of these guys that were seniors this year at the end of the spring, you know, it was, it was thanking them, um, you know, for um, sticking it out and, and trusting that um, things were going to work out and that we were going to work to get better. And, and we're going to put a plan together um, to uh, you know, to fix, you know, the, the issues. And that's kind of what it became as we kind of got through the half of that 2019 season was like, okay, this, you know, now we kind of know where we're at. We we know our roster. We know, you know, where we need to get better. And so we were able to devise a plan um, going through the season and, and basically just kind of work towards um, implementing things that we needed to implement for the future, not necessarily right now. But um, and so the coaches, um, you know, bought into it and, and, you know, the players, you know, came back in the spring and were working hard and then obviously going through COVID and all that stuff and not playing. Um, you know, but we were able to go recruit kids and um, and and not um, not get rid of, you know, it's kind of the same deal from our side of it. We didn't sit there and say we were one in 10 and, and these players are not good. And so we're going to get rid of everybody. We said, OK, this is what we have. This is who's at Southeastern um, and and they're young and we need to develop these kids and we need to get them in the weight room um, because they're young and they haven't developed yet. And uh, you know, now we're sitting here with a lot of the same guys. I think it's like 31 of the of our two deep um, uh, last year uh, was in our two deep in 2019. So that's that's a lot of guys that, that yeah. went through some, you know, some tough times. And, and I think it proves um, it just proves that, um, you know, you stick things out and you and you just keep working and, um, you know, good things will happen. Um you know, I wasn't sure that it was going to be that, you know, that we were going to be that good, you know, biggest turnaround in nine and three and bowl win and, and all that stuff. And it could have been better. I mean, we, you know, we, those are things that we need to capitalize on this year and, and kind of take that next step and try to figure out, um, uh, you know, how to, how to win every game, um, you know, and we lost some close ones and, and uh, lost some games that, uh, you know, we felt like, that, uh, you know, if the ball bounced another way, we, we probably could have pulled him out. But, um, you know, it's winning, you know, that's – I tell our guys all the time, winning is is not easy. It takes a lot of work and a lot of preparation, and and it's not something that, um, you know, you just wake up on Saturday and go win. I mean, it's something that, you know, over the course of an entire year of developing and, and growing and, and recruiting and, and, and bringing the team together, you know, even more so, you know, making sure that it's – you know, uh, um, you know, uh, has good chemistry. And, um, and so that's, uh, that, that was all that kind of went into that, um, that 21 season. And so now we're, you know, getting ready for fall camp and we're, you know, trying to find ways that, you know, what can we do to take the next step? And, and our, our guys are pretty hungry and excited to, uh, to get back at it. 
I want to clarify, by the way, because I, w- I want to make sure people know. I, I do know you, and I don't, I don't believe you're hypercritical, but it's just like you said. I mean, you want to find ways to win every game. So there's there's always something more to look at, even with a fantastic turnaround like what you had. Well, uh, 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 opportunities ahead, and I think it begins with Dalton Hadley. He led the way for you last year. You talk about people who are returning. He's one of those who are returning for the 22 season. Quarterback passed for nearly 3,200 yards, 27 touchdowns, just five interceptions, and I think that's a good place to start. Yeah, I mean, anytime you've got your quarterback back, um, you know, Dalton is a guy that, um, you know, first of all, Dalton got married this uh, this offseason. And so congratulations to Dalton and his yes. wife and, uh, and his family and all that stuff. So that was um, exciting step for him. That also tells you how, you know, <laughs> that uh, that he's been around a while and um, and he's seen a lot of football. Um, Dalton can go out uh, right now and and run a practice. Um, he knows our offense as, as well as I do, and and um, and he's got great leadership. I mean, he is one of those guys that um, he he is not afraid to, um, you know, coach guys up on the field and demand excellence, um, and uh, and 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 fix things and and make sure that they're on the same page. And and so his having his leadership back is is a uh, you know is, is something that we're. Uh, fortunate to have um, going into this year with all the returners that we got back. Um, you know, so it's, um, you know, Dalton, Dalton and I have kind of built a, a really good relationship and, and uh, sometimes he'll wave me off when I call a play and I'll just let him go with it uh, because I trust that, you know, that, that he's studied and, um, and then if it doesn't work, then I'll <laughs> then we'll have that discussion, but usually it works because he knows uh, he knows what he's doing and, and, uh, and he gets all those guys on the same page. Well, you talk about people returning. He he has quite a receiving core that he's going to be familiar with already. Let me let me give some of those names here. Braxton Kincaid, Deuce Pittman, Marquise Gray, Catrell Blakely, among the leaders in receiving last year. And they had pretty good numbers, each one of them themselves. Coming back for 22, that, that also with uh, Hatley being familiar with them, not just your place, but with those playmakers. Yeah, and that and that's um, the, the chemistry that those guys have. Um, I mean, it's a very dynamic uh, receiving core. I mean, Marquise Gray is kind of the, you know, he's a he's fast and can get catch the deep ball. Braxton's a guy that just, you know, finds a way to get open and and, and he's always on the same page. Him and, him and uh, Dalton have such a great relationship. Um, they, they talk football all the time and talk about, you know, what's going on here and what's going on there. And, um, you know, Cottrell is Mr. Consistent, um, led, the, led the team in, in receptions. And it just seems like he's always uh, makes the tough catch and, and finds a way to get open and makes a guy miss. And, and then Deuce is, the, you know, the big guy. And I think, you know, that, that's just the, 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 the four that have gotten the most experience. I think you're looking at Hunter Hawthorne um, is, a, is a guy that's a big frame that um, – uh, can make plays and, and catches the ball well and, and, and is fast. And um, and then you got some guys like um, uh, Whitley who, you know, Whitley is maybe as fast as any of them and has been young and, and growing and, and getting better and had a great spring. And, um, you know, and then a uh, guy that has missed the last couple of years, but, you know, throwing Jossie Smith back in the mix. And so there's just so – there's so many weapons – uh, and and depth that uh, it's a good problem to have. You know, we got to find a way to get all these guys the ball. Yeah. Um, you know, and so that's that's the tough thing. But I think you know ultimately these guys understand our offense. They understand that it's you know they can't be selfish, and um, you know their their time is going to come. And they 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 have such a good relationship with each other that they they are rooting for each other to um, you know to get you know just you know they, they want the other guy to have more catches. I mean that's that's a uh, that's a unique situation, and so it's it's fun to work with this group. We're speaking now with Coach Tyler Fenwick from Southeastern, the Savage Storm, nine and three last season. Again, biggest turnaround in, in Division Two here on Midwest Sportsnet. And I encourage you, please do like this video and take the time to subscribe to the channel. We'd appreciate that. We've passed a thousand subscriber marks, so we're heading for two right now. We'd love for you to be one of those subscribers. Coach, uh, defense did its job last year, stepped up when it needed to, and uh, there were some some big moments for for this defense as well. I, I just wanted to start with the secondary because you bring back Josh Malumba and Keyshawn Somerville, who were very, very active in that secondary and, and uh, taking away opportunities from opponents. Yeah, I, honestly, I think going into this season, I, I – I would argue that this may be the fastest defense that, that I've ever been a part of, um, you know, starting with the secondary with, uh, you know, Malumba's kind of the, um, 
you know, he's the, the veteran leader that really understands the scheme. He's kind of the coach on the field and, and, uh, and obviously Keyshawn um, playing corner and, and his, he's got track speed. Um, but then, you know, you got um, Jalen Freeman, Jay free um, that, I mean, he is all over the place. We play him a lot of different places. Um, he's kind of that, he's, he's that guy that you can roll down in the box. You can put, play him at outside linebacker. You can play him at safety, you can play him at corner. I mean, he, there's just so many things that he can do. Um, you know, and then, and then, um, Keelan Chilton, um, chill is, is, has played corner. He's played safety. Um, and he's fast and he's active and he's competitive. And, um, and then Micah Rogers is a guy that's really come along, um, and, and, and did some good things in a backup role last year, um, and did some great things. I mean, he was, he had to, we had an injury and he had to start, um, against Oklahoma Baptist and he, and he proved it, you know, he just came out and it was kind of next man up and I've got a job to do. And he proved that he needs to be on the field and he had a great spring. And, and so, um, there's just a lot of, uh, there's a lot of speed back there that, uh, and, and they've been together now for so long that they, um, you know, they're making checks and they're making sure that they're all on the same page. And, and, and so they're all kind of becoming that, um, you know, it's, it, it makes Coach Johnson's job a lot easier because, you know, it's, it's, he can call a defense and then they can make us right. Well, Coach, things get underway in less than six weeks now. September the 1st, that's a Thursday night, and you're at home. So the folks in Durant have an opportunity to watch the Savage Storm get the 22 season underway. Hosting Arkansas Tech, your entire schedule is a Great American Conference. League schedule gets underway with Arkansas Tech at home on a Thursday. And then you go on the road to take on Harding Saturday, September 10th. And Coach, I don't, you know, that, that really was a big game for you all last year. Getting the win over Harding, it seemed like it really – uh, you know, kick, kept things going and to say to folks around and so folks who may be watching Southeastern, this team might make something happen this year. Yeah. I, I think that, um, you know, that, that Harding game was, was a confidence booster that, that, you know, told our team that, okay, we can play with the big boys, you know, and we can compete in the fourth quarter when we have to. Um, it kind of showed that, um, you know, just, just, it, it got them believing. Um, I thought, I think it got them believing in, you know, over the hump, believing in our coaching staff um, that we're on the right track and that we can, um, you know, that we can win together, you know, and we can, and, and we can take this thing a little bit further than, um, than, than, you know, just, you know, winning the games that we're supposed to win, I guess. Uh, if that's, you know, that's, uh, but, you know, yeah, I mean, it, you know, I, Starting September 1st, I mean, um, we're at home against Arkansas Tech, which I think um, is a good opponent. I, I think we have a very difficult schedule this year. I think that, um, uh, you know, going on the road, um, you know, to Harding, um, going on the road to uh, Northwest uh, Oklahoma State, which is a long trip, on the road to Arkansas Monticello, um, on the road to Henderson. Um, so I think, you know, and then, you know, obviously, you know, you, you got Wachita that's – we we've done some things in this conference now that I think has woken up some people that says that we got to watch out for Southeastern where maybe last year we kind of snuck up on some people. Um, and so, you know, when that happens and you win those games, you've got to be prepared to have um, – you, you know, you, you're going to get – you're going to get your opponent's best every week. You know what I mean? I mean, mm -hmm. it's – you know, it's, it's whoever you're playing – um, from, from team, you know, team one to team, you know, whatever, uh, 12 or, um, it, they know that, okay, we got Southeastern this week and we got to bring our A game and we got to be totally focused. And so, um, I think that, that poses a whole nother set of challenges, um, you know, that, that we've got to step our game up and we can't, um, we can't let one slip, you know, because we weren't prepared or because we were playing right. somebody that, you know, we just expect to be. Um, and that's just that's not the way it works in sports. And that's not the way it works in the GAC, because I think the conference is from top to bottom. Anybody can beat anybody, you know, any given week. So, um, you know, and then and then the other part of it, too, is, is you know, I, I try to tell our guys that, you know, this isn't the same football team. You know, Southeastern 2022 is not the same football team that as 2021. Yeah, we have a lot of guys that are back, but we also have guys that we have to replace, you know, Devin Mitchell. Um, was our left tackle who's an all-conference guy is gone so we have somebody else is going to have to step up and do that um, you know Caleb Weatherford is gone and so you know the next center is going to have to step up and, and take that spot and um, 
you know, there's some really good running backs on, on, uh, that we had last year with, uh, RT and, and, uh, and CJ that, you know, those guys are gone. And so, so there's some guys that are going to have to step up, um, and fill those roles defensively. Um, you know, Jeremiah Baltrip is gone. So the next corner is going to have to step up and, 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 and so there's just, there's so many things that, um, you know, every year is a new year and it's not, you know, it, it's not, we're nine and three and we're going to try to go get a 10th win. It's we're O and O, you know, just like everybody else. And the nine and three thing is over, you know, that's great. It's in the history books and it's in the, you know, whatever in the archives and all that stuff. But um, at this point now it's uh, we, we've got to, uh, we got to reboot and we got to start over and, and um, you know, try to get the first win and, and try to get to one and O. Well, Coach, the nine and three has given people like me something to talk about for the last few months, so I appreciate that. But I, I, I'm with you on it. I understand that. Oh, and oh, right now, and heading in better than, better than talking about one and ten. That's for sure. I'm sure. I'm sure it is for for both of us. It is, uh, Coach. I appreciate the time heading into the 22 season. Oh, and oh, as you said, but the first game Thursday, September 1st, and that will be in Durant as the Savage Storm will take on the wonder boys from Arkansas tech coach. Thank you very much for taking time with us today. We appreciate you and success to you into the savage storm this season. Yeah. Awesome. I appreciate uh, you having me on and, and always enjoy talking about um, Southeastern football. 